Tonight, I would like to read to you an Okinawan children's story called Suruchan, written by Akemi Kinjo. I should say, written and illustrated by Akemi Kinjo, and translated into English by Ken and Kazue uh, Nakamura Hyuba. Suruchan, a message from Okinawa. Suruchan is in the second grade. It is February. Spring is coming soon. Nakagusku Bay is clear and blue. The sea is alive and all the creatures are living in harmony. Suruchan has five brothers and sisters. Her oldest brother is stationed at Oroku Airport as a soldier. Her father and mother work in the wide open sugarcane fields. She goes to school with the money earned by them. Suruchan takes care of her younger siblings, carrying Jean, her youngest brother, on her back and playing hide and seek with her younger sister Hide. She delivers the yummy vegetable porridge and a kettle of delicious tea with her older sister Haru. Of course, when they go home, her father puts her in one of the baskets balancing from his yoke. It wobbles up and down and gives her a fun ride. Her older cousin Yoshi watches and laughs. Suruchan likes Yoshi very much. However, in mid-March, when the yellow-green leaves were turning to green, beyond the sugarcane fields, the sea became dark and quiet. The fathers made dugouts on the hillside. Then all the families hid in them. Why are we hiding? Why can't we play in I'm sorry, why are we hiding? We can't play in such a small hole. At the end of March, her father came home with a look of concern on his face. He unexpectedly told everyone that they were all going to hide in a cave at the Futenma Shrine. Why, Suruchan thought, as she, her aunt, uncle, and older cousin walked all the way to Futenma together. They tripped and tumbled. They went through a lot to get there. Hey, this cave is full, said the people inside the cave. What can we do? We'll have to go back to Nakagusku to hide in our family tomb, Suruchan sighed. They kept quiet at night. Inside the tomb, it was smelly and dark. It was hard to breathe. Her older sister Haru clung to father, and Jean and Hide stuck to mother. Suruchan hugged Yoshi, and they all held their breath together. All of a sudden, they heard a sound. Something horrible was coming towards them. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Suddenly there were loud sounds with, which hurt her ears. There were flare bombs and shells that flew from the sea. Boom, boom, bang, bang. The ground was rumbling. Suruchan shuddered with fear. What's happening? Suruchan clung to her cousin. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Father muttered through the terrible sounds. Why? Father's face was very serious, and he said, This tomb is dangerous. Let's escape to where the Japanese soldiers are. Early April, when the wet south wind blew, Suruchan's family was still trying to escape. Mother hurried and walked. She carried Jean on her back. She led Hide by hand and had a basket on her head. They walked in the hills and fields day and night, whenever there was a chance. Tanobaru, Nishibaru, Kochi. They hid when they needed to. It was the end of May, rainy and damp. They finally reached the underground base of the Southern Haibaru Army Hospital. It smelled worse than the tomb. There were many wounded soldiers who were asking for water. They were groaning with pain. Suruchan's family members weren't soldiers. They spent nights sitting at the entrance of the cave. At the beginning of June, the heavy rain hadn't stopped. The Tama troop is coming, so civilians, so all civilians have to get out, a voice from inside told them. They were evicted from the underground base. The next morning, where are we going, father? Don't you worry. I'm going to dig out a hole for us to hide in. Those were his last words. The moment he stepped away from the cave entrance, he collapsed on the ground. A bomb. 
Did they aim it at the soldiers in the cave or at my father who didn't have a weapon? A bomb had dropped. Sudarshan grew more afraid of the bullets and bombs. Daddy, she screamed, but no sound came out. She felt shocked and numb. Her entire body was trembling. When it was quiet outside and in their hearts, they buried their father in the sugar house nearby. Yoshi was crying as she told Suruchan, Remember the site where we buried him. It hurt Suruchan even more to see Yoshi's crying face. Suruchan couldn't hold her tears either. She cried. They left the Hayabaru Army Hospital. Suruchan's family escaped with her uncle, aunt, and Yoshi. They ran together with the stream of other people. There were soldiers that were running away. It was dark and pouring rain. Suruchan could see Jin and Hide. Mother was carrying and pulling them behind her. She could see her older sister Haru. Uh, Suruchan and Yoshi were walking behind them, trying to keep up. Everyone walked on the muddy road, stepping over the bodies on the ground. They escaped to the south. Somehow, they got close to Kochinda village. We will soon get to that house there. Mother is going to take a rest inside. Mother looked small as she disappeared into the house. She heard the explosion. Suruchan and Yoshi crouched down. They were scared. The house had just exploded. They didn't know where to hide anymore. Suruchan, her uncle, aunt, and Yoshi all ran to the pigsty nearby. Of course, a bomb fell there as well. Yoshi injured her shoulder, her uncle injured his hand, and her aunt injured her jaw. Suruchan was shaking with fear when she saw their injuries. She was so scared. The evening gloom and the light from the bomb seemed to last for a long time. She realized her mother, her older sister Haru, her younger brother Jean, and her younger sister Hide were gone. They didn't know where the rest of the family was buried. However, the injured aunt, uncle, Yoshi, and Suruchan ran away. The stream of people and dust rushed to the south. Yoshi took Suruchan's hand and ran away. Her aunt had maggots on her jaw. She could go no farther to the south. Uncle put her in a small hole and covered her with thin branches he found on the beach. Don't leave me. Give me some water. She could see Auntie's face slightly. We'll be back. Don't worry, Uncle shouted. He was shouting and started to run again towards the south. There were three left. Suruchan was chilled by her aunt's voice. Please stop crying, she thought. Was it June or July? Finally, they had come all the way to the most southern part of the island. There were cliffs and the dark sea below. Suruchan slowly found her way down to the shore. They found a small cave. There were many soldiers inside the cave. They hid quietly together with, uh, with the soldiers. Yoshi stayed with Suruchan. She didn't complain about the pain of her wounded shoulder. Then Suruchan saw the body of the big white American soldier. He was aiming a gun. They became prisoners. They were put on a truck and taken away back to the north. Her uncle was put on a different truck. She never saw him again. There were no guns and bombs on the truck. She felt confused. They arrived in a village called Ginoza. There were many tents and many people. However, Suruchan and Yoshi only had each other. It was summer. They were burying dead people all together in a big hole near a hill. Yoshi had maggots on her shoulder. Yoshi was the only person Suruchan had left. Yoshi, who was laying herself down, called Suruchan to her side. Suruchan, do you remember where we buried father and the places where Jin, Hide, mother, and Haru died? I was going to collect their bones and put them in the tomb, but it seems I cannot. So please remember, please do it for me. I am adopted. I'm not your uncle's daughter. My real father is your father. 
I am your sister, Suruchan. I'm sorry. Then Yoshi died. Suruchan cried more than ever. She didn't feel lonely when her older sister Yoshi was there, but now she was really alone. She cried and cried. She cried because she was scared. She didn't know what was going to happen next. She hoped it wouldn't be bad. She couldn't help but feel more terrible things would happen. She cried. Time has passed. In a year, my grandchild will turn seven. It brings back the memories for me. I was seven <clears throat> during that horrible war. For now and forever, I yearn for peace. From Sudo Chan.